uh, good morning everyone i hope everyone is doing well so today uh, i am here to just discuss one of the most confusion uh, point which uh, most of the student recently asked me and it's about either uh, they should do uac mele step 2 or uh, i form and which one is prefer so uh, basically and even some students uh, and medical uh, doctors they were they have already passed usmle and they said uh, what do you think should we uh, sit for i form 2 or no so the, the the important point is so if you think that they will not accept uh, doctors and residents or who or who passed usmle so why they put it as a requirement they could easily remove that and uh, put it only i form as the standard exam for them so of course all those who 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 already passed usmle step 2 ck there is no need of uh, sitting again for the i form and passing again uh, i form and uh, and i applied uh, to neurosurgery program by USMLE so I passed step 2 CK I had USMLE step 2 CK and then I applied I did not set again for the iPhone so this is for those who are saying either the uh, USMLE is not valid or they are not giving uh, like the chances less than those who already passed iPhone and even recently I asked some of the residents uh, well, uh, who passed iPhone? I have seen residents who passed USMLE. Of course, it's less, and those students, uh, most of the residents are uh, here. They have passed iPhone. Uh, I asked some of them, and as for them, they mentioned that uh, iPhone is uh, easier than USMLE Step Two CK. <clears throat> in terms of preparation, it takes less time. In terms of uh, money and uh, expenses it takes uh, uh, you will spend less money and uh, of course in the term of exam it's only half like four hour exam but uh, versus usmle which needs uh, longer preparation uh, a longer uh, duration of the exam uh, which is uh, eight hours exam and in terms of uh, expenses uh, you will spend a lot so this was their uh, main reason that they did uh, iphone uh, of course it's not for all of them only for some of them that i just met and i asked them this specific question uh, and another thing that is very important regarding uh, usmd uh, if you have USMLE, uh, you should have uh, a good justification for staying here. For example, uh, no one likes in either of uh, country in the world, even if it's your country and you're the program director. You don't you you don't like the people who just you are investing on them and uh, you will accept them in their program and then they they will leave you uh, in the middle of the program. If they find something, for example, outside the the, uh, the country, so of course it's the same here. If uh, they think, or uh, for example, uh, if they know that for the student that I will accept him, I already invested on him and all these, and he will leave me in the middle of the program. Of course, they will not accept you, and there is less chance that. Uh, they will accept you in the program. So even if you have USMLE, you should have a good justification and reasons uh, to convince them that you will stay here and you will finish the program. I mean, even some of the, the residents after the, they accepted, they are doing their USMLE uh, because in the future, the, some of them have planned to do uh, fellowships in the US. So they are, that's why they are doing the USMLE. So these are the, the main concerns and uh, some of them, uh, 
the student mentioned uh, should we mention our UECMLE step one or either should I mention that I am ECFMG certified or not for me uh, I did like step one step two and I was ECFMG certified so I clearly mentioned in my CV uh, that yeah I was uh, I passed UECMLE step one I passed step two and I'm ECFMG certified so I just mentioned everything uh, clearly and uh, uh, in my CV and I was honest in my CV you know this is very important and uh, I will have a different talk on, on, on the CV how to improve that because many people were asking about the how to improve the CV and either the research is mandatory to have it or no so regarding this uh, question I will have a different uh, talk but about uh, the USMLE and IFOM I think it doesn't matter either you have uh, USMLE or either you have iPhone, uh, iPhone step 2 uh, as long as you have uh, or as long as you fill the requirements and you are eligible apply and uh, now it's uh, more uh, com uh, like uh, nowadays there are more students and residents they are applying so the, 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 the program is a little competitive and so make sure that the score is good enough uh, it, it doesn't mean like for example uh, okay if you have less score you will not have the chance so one of the the, the, the requirement is either to pass USMLE or IFOM to have IFOM like that's equal to passing USMLE which is 74 now so if someone has for example a higher score, a score uh, uh, they will have a good chance then those who have a lower score so of course score is uh, important and it shows that uh, um, how hard you work and that's why you get a higher score so it's better to have a good score a higher score uh, but it's not must uh, the only requirement is like you either you pass USMLE or you have uh, like uh, 74 iPhone so you are eligible and you can apply and uh, in, uh, in different in another section in another talk I will uh, uh, briefly mention how to improve your CV